Hey guys, welcome to Rustin Wrenches. We are not going to be working on any cars today. Our first video is going to be about building a vanity. That's right, this is going to be a two-part DIY series about how to build yourself a vanity at home. In this first part, you'll get to see how I built it. In the second part, I'll show you how to sand it down, prepare it for paint, and then wire this whole thing up, and then you'll be ready to go and make yourself look pretty. So the backstory behind this is my sister was on the lookout for a vanity for a while. The only problem was the ones that she wanted were very expensive. Some of them went over a thousand dollars, which is insane to me. And the ones that she could afford were not very good. They were cheap looking, they looked small, they weren't very bright, or she just genuinely didn't like the way they looked. All you'll need is some basic tools that I'll leave in the description below and some lumber that you can get from any home improvement store. Now this option is a lot cheaper and it knocked out two birds with one stone. I was looking for a Christmas gift for her anyway so I decided I'd build her this for Christmas and I'd try something I never tried building before. Also the advantage of building one on your own is you can make it for your needs specifically depending on how big your room is, how much light you need, how much stuff you want to fit on it. The world is your oyster. I don't know what that means but you know. So when we decide I decided to build one uh, and I told her to search the internet, pick out examples of what kind she liked, different styles, what features they had. And she sent me these two. So we sat down, looked at the two, we talked it over. We decided to combine the designs to incorporate all the features she liked about both. What she wanted was a moderately sized vanity, one that's not so big that she couldn't fit in her room. She wanted a frameless mirror with that classic floating light bulb array. A glass top with three compartments underneath that she can actually stow away things and see all the things in each compartment. So I thought that was pretty cool. And the final feature that she liked alongside the vanity will be two decorative narrow shelves that are separate from it that add to the aesthetic to the entire piece. Besides adding to the look, they're actually pretty practical if you have something that can't fit in these compartments. You actually stow them up here right next to the vanity. Um, joining me today is my sister Eileen and the most valued member of our family, uh, oh, Mickey. She's a beautiful dog. He! The girl. Look at this, he has a Quit winner playing in. with he his, has balls. his balls! What is wrong with Look, you? Quit touching them! Huge. <laughs> this is on He's me. a boy! <laughs> Now, whenever taking on a project like this, it's best to have it planned out in detail to minimize costly mistakes. So I sketched out a plan for this on AutoCAD with all the dimensions I need. I have left a PDF of this below. By the way, you don't necessarily need CAD experience. You can do this just fine on a piece of paper and pencil. I designed this around materials I can easily get. From Home Depot, we found this 24 inch by 36 inch non-beveled mirror and this 24 inch by 18 inch sheet of glass that would mate perfectly to the mirror. It was important for both to be the same width to get nice clean lines. We are going to start with constructing the shelves. For this, you need two 2x8s, both 10 feet in length. The first one we are cutting into the little shelf segments. Measure along the length of the 2x8 a total of 14 identical 8 inch length pieces. This is where the pencil and square come in handy. The square is to make sure your marks are perfectly 90 degrees, so all your cuts are straight. Side note, notice I'm out in front of my yard doing this. I don't have a proper workshop. This goes to show you that you don't need one. I grabbed two stools, placed two long pieces of scrap wood we had over them, and another board lying around to fashion a makeshift work area. After measuring, start making your cuts, and while you're at it, have someone use a bit of sandpaper to smooth down the cut sites. Preferably someone that has a lot of free time, like, say, Eileen. Now that all the shelf segments are cut, we'll grab the other 10 foot length of 2x8. This is going to be the main vertical section where all the segments will be attached to. Measure it directly at its halfway point, which will make the finished shelves 5 foot tall. Hey! 
Now for marking the locations for the segments to be attached to the five foot sections we just cut. Each shelf will have seven segments. They are gonna be equidistant from each other, so about 8.6 or eight and two thirds inches apart. So measure from the bottom of each five foot section and make a mark at each corresponding distance of 8.6 inches. When you get to the top, there will be a gap equal to the width of the side of the two by eight. That's supposed to happen since the segment is gonna sit flush with the top of the five foot section. I'm not an experienced carpenter by any means, so I wasn't gonna do box joints or dovetail joints to mate this bottom of the shelf together. For this, I just bought simple metal L brackets. They're gonna be the biggest ones you'll need for the entire build. They are 10 inch by 10 inch. I chose these for their perfect length and solid steel construction to ensure the shelf won't topple over due to a weak bottom. I fastened them on by using wood screws that mated well with the holes pre-drilled into the bracket. Since I'm going to be drilling a lot of screws into the wood, I made sure to drill a lot of pilot holes as well. A pilot hole is a hole drilled out in order to prevent wood from splitting as well as guiding the screw along a predetermined path. Now that the pilot holes are drilled, I attach the L brackets with the wood screws followed by the bottom most shelf piece. Be sure to make sure that these brackets and shelf pieces are assembled to where the shelf will stand perfectly straight. You don't want it standing cockeyed. Stand it up on a flat level surface to check and make adjustments accordingly. Guess it's just you and me now. At this point, we can begin assembling the rest of the shelf. I have smaller L brackets for these. Since all the wood should be straight, just lean the shelf segment up against the 2 by 8 to mimic the position it will be installed. This way I don't install the brackets incorrectly just to be safe. Then I install the segment at the next mark location up the shelf. There you have it, one vanity shelf. Now repeat the same process for the other side. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Hello? Hello? Now moving on to the main structure itself, we start by cutting all the 2x4 into various lengths needed. If you make as many mistakes as I did, you'll probably need about 4 8 foot lengths of 2x4. So you'll need, for the legs, 4 lengths of 2.5 feet, 2 lengths of 2 feet and 4.5 and inches, Another two lengths of three feet five inches for the mirror frame. Then you'll need sections of one by six board. For the compartment walls under the glass, you'll need to cut four one and one half foot sections of one by six board. And then for the back panel of the compartments, it will be a three foot length of one by six. And then finally, various lengths of one by four. Two lengths of one foot eight and one half inches, and one length of two feet and eleven and a half inches. 
Trust me, this will all make sense later on. Next on the list is drilling the holes of the lights in the wood frame that will also support the mirror. Measure and mark the center lines of all the wood you'll be using for the frame. Now how many lights you want and their positioning is totally up to you. In all honesty, I probably went a little overboard installing 13 lights into this thing because when turned on, it's like looking at the sun. For the top rail at the corners, I use where both center lines intersect from the wood sections as a starting point for the first two light socket locations. Then I mark five more positions equidistant from each other in between these two sections. In this case, the spacing between all the lights will be 5 and 11 16 inches. For the sides, I set four holes spaced at 5 and a half inches apart, starting from the top down. You'll notice when I'm finished with the vanity that the lowest light socket on each side has some space between it and the bottom of the mirror. That's done on purpose. Hey. Once you have all of your holes marked, take a 1 and 1 8 inch diameter hole saw and just start drilling into it. Once all the holes are drilled, you can take some hardware like these and just fasten the pieces together. This will be the almost finished frame for your mirror. And here we have the Onison working in his natural habitat. Pulling together a frame, a vanity if you will, for his dear baby sister, who is vain and needs a vanity. Notice how I keep looking at the screen to watch myself instead of looking in the lens to make it a bit more dramatic. Next up are the legs slash side braces of the vanity. The legs will be tricky if you are like me and do not have a table saw, but it's not impossible. Little tip, if you use two separate pieces of wood that are the same width, fasten them down. You can use them and a circular saw to cut a notch into a piece of lumber without cutting all the way through it. After the notches are cut, I use a 1 inch wide chisel and go to town until I get the right depth I want for the wood to sit flush inside of the notch. By the way, if you need some fancy shaped wood or trim pieces like this one, look around at any local secondhand building material stores in your area. Places like Habitat for Humanity or Dirt Cheap, this piece has the perfect routed edge for the glass top I'm going to be using. Now if you're human and chisel a bit too much off in your notch, don't worry. Go down and get yourself a wood filler. I just happen to have rock hard. It's really easy to use, just add water, not too much, and mix until you get the consistency you want. And then spread on whatever surface to fill in any irregularities in the wood you may have caused or otherwise. After all this, you simply just assemble the leg sections with braces in the middle and behind the mirror edge piece at the top. From the four pieces of 1x6 we cut before, I took two of them and fastened them to the inside of each piece at the top. This was both for strengthening as well as giving the inside a clean look. Mm -hmm. 
Once the sides are assembled, we move on to the panel that will make up the bottom of the compartments. At Lowe's, they sell this almost perfectly sized piece that is two by four feet. Just trim that extra foot off to three feet and sand down the cut edge. After, make sure to measure and mark the locations of where you want the compartment walls to be. Remember, to mark both sides in the same location. This will help later on when installing them. Now time to assemble it all. I use the same small L brackets I used on the shelves to attach the panel to the legs. Again, make sure everything you do is squared. Now it's time for bracing. You don't want this thing to just fall apart on you. That back panel that we cut should just slide in. Mark off underneath where the back panel is so you can screw it in from the bottom. This is to keep up with that clean look we are looking for. Next are the compartment walls. Remember those marks we made before? This is where they come in handy. Just drill along those lines and into the back panel and you are all set. Don't forget to drill pilot holes to prevent the wood from splitting. Next is a leg brace. I cut this one just a smidge longer to properly distribute the forces throughout the structure. Remember it is always better to have a piece too long rather than too short. You can always cut more off. Once that is all secured, test fit your glass. I recommend putting the compartment walls and the back panel together first with tape and test the fitment prior to any drilling, just to be safe that it is all measured correctly. And then test fit it once again after installation. Finally, it is time to fasten the mirror frame to the vanity. Don't forget to notch the bottom sides of the frame to slide into place. Doing so will increase the strength of the structure once the final brace is installed. Be sure to test fit your mirror beforehand if any adjustments need to be made. Once that is done, you may drill in the frame. And finally the last step, this is the final brace. Slide it into the back where it will support the mirror frame and drill it in. See, I just don't, I like the view from this way and this way, but maybe not so much this way. Know what I mean? <laughs> you just saw me talking through the camera. <laughs> That's our neighbor, Pavlov. Is it Pavlov? I think so. Baklava? Yep. Baklava. His name is Turkish Delight. So that's the end of the first part. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Look forward to the second video coming out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, <sighs> All right, bye. Just stop. Got to, to finish this another day. Wow. Reporting live in the front yard of 13. Oh, never mind. Are you trying to tell them where they where we live? Um. This is Ralph Lauren. Let's make a music video. Yeah? <laughs> I can use Mickey's house as the beat drop. Oh! Reporting live! Get. Reporting live from the front yard of. And here we are, reporting live in the front. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> I tried to get out of the
frame. I went like this to get out of the frame. I was still in the frame. <laughs> okay, reporting live. I think that they understand that we are reporting live. Reporting live from the front yard of Line. <laughs> Our house. Reporting live from the front yard. And here we are today building, building a vanity. As you can see here, okay, cameraman, come on. Here we go. Aha. Uh -huh. Focus on me. Oh. But we don't actually want to do that. We want to focus on everyone. So here we have a piece of wood. And here we also have is another piece of wood. And last but not least, some more wood. All right, you got the inside scoop and you heard it here first. Signing out. Bye.